Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this one, we are going to introduce functions in CMake. And functions are like what you have seen in other programming languages like C and C++. They allow you to set up a piece of reusable code that you can later on call multiple times to do whatever it is you want to do. In CMake, you create a function by saying function like we do here. You specify the name of the function and then you pass the arguments of the function and you can have as many arguments as you want. And in the body, you get to do whatever it is your function does. Make sure you end your function with this end function thing. And you can read about this if you want, okay? If you go down, you may see a few examples, but I am going to give you an example to get you started here. One thing that is really important to keep in mind is that functions in CMake introduce a new scope for variables. Again, function introduce a new scope. Outside the function, you are in the global scope. And when you hit the inside or the body of the function, you are in another function nested scope. And variables you define in the global scope are separate from the variables you declare in the nested scope here. And it is even possible to have variables of the same name. They won't affect each other. This is something you need to know. Now, inside the function, if you want to affect variables in the global scope, there is a special setting you can pass to the set command, and it is the parent scope thing here. When you do something like this, you say, I am setting this thing to have a new value, okay, the value is here, but I want this to affect this variable in the parent scope, or the color scope, the scope that called this function here, if that is making any sense. So what we are doing in this example here is basically imitating the return mechanism in languages like C and C++. We are not explicitly returning from the function, but we are writing results of our computations in the function into a variable that we can access in the global scope. If you go down here, we will set up a few global variables, global var1 and global var2. We give them a value. We print them out before we call the function. So this is going to say the original values and we call the function to modify the global variables. If we print the data again, we should see the data we set in our nested scope because our setting here affected these variables in the global scope. Another thing you should notice is that we are evaluating, we are dereferencing these parameters. And this is something key to understanding with functions in CMake. When you pass a parameter, it is really like you are copying the variable. So this variable, var1, is going to be referencing the variable argument that we passed when we called the function. In here, we are passing global var1. So this is going to be as if var1 is pointing to global var here, okay? And when we do the dereferencing, we are basically going to take a global var and stick it in this evaluation that we are doing here, basically saying we are setting a global var in the parent scope. I hope this makes sense. And I will get a chance to explain this in a minute when we hit Visual Studio Code, if this is not making any sense. Now, if we don't use parent scope, this is going to just affect the nested scope and the global scope is not going to be affected. It is going to keep printing whatever it is it had before. We will get a chance to see this in a minute when we hit Visual Studio Code. Now that you understand a bit about functions, let's look at another example. Here we have a simple function. The function name is increment variable. Okay, we have end function. This is going to be the block of our function here. And inside the function, we do a math expression, which is going to be incrementing whatever value we have in this variable here. Where do we store the result? We will store the result in the variable that was passed as an argument to this function here. This is what we are doing here. And what is the expression? Basically grab the value in this var. Notice that we are dereferencing twice here. The first dereferencing is going to give us the name of the argument. The second dereferencing is going to get the value in that argument. Make sure you really understand this because this is key to working with functions in CMake. Once we do the incrementation, the new value will be stored in var. So we will store the new value 
in the variable that we passed and this is going to be affecting the value in the global scope notice that we are passing parent scope here i realize this can be really confusing but let me try and explain this again suppose this is a function okay we have a v1 here we have a v2 and we pass them as arguments in the function and uh, the function takes a1 and a2 okay when we pass v1 here a1 is going to be another variable that points to this variable here. And remember that this variable may contain it too. So by the time we pass this 2 into this variable, it's like we take the 2 and wrap it in v1. Okay, v1 is pointing to the 2 variable here. When we pass it as an argument, it's like we are wrapping it again, okay, in a1. That's what happens when we hit the inside of the function. So if we want to get to the value inside the body of the function, we need to dereference once and twice and then get the value, which is what we are doing here when we need the value. If we want to get to the variable that was passed as an argument, then we need to dereference once and get to v1 here, which is what we are doing here when we set the variable living in our parent scope. I really hope this makes sense. Once we have the function, we will set up a variable that we want to manipulate in the global scope. It is right here. We call the function once, we call the function twice, and our value should be incremented twice. This is something you can do. Another thing you can do is set up a loop that is going to be incrementing however many times you want. In this case, it's going to be incrementing twice, and it is going to be printing the value here. If this is not making sense, please bear with me. We are going to head over to Visual Studio Code and play with this a little more. So here we are in Visual Studio Code. We will set up our function. It's going to be called Modify Global Variables. It is cleverly named here. And the main purpose of this function is to mimic the return mechanism in C++. So we basically want to get a function to do something and we want the function to give us the value. In this case, it is going to be writing the value, the result of its computation in a global variable that we can later access. That's what we do here. So we set up a function. The name is modify global variables. It's going to take two parameters. And inside the function, we want to set new values to these arguments that were passed to the function here. Because we want to access the variables that were passed, we do reference once here. This is really key to understand. Again, when you get to call the function, notice here, we have a global var1. This is the variable. We have global var2. When we pass it and it has a value, let's say value. Okay. Let's say it's value. And uh, it is pointed to by global var. Let's do gv. Okay. To make this easy to write here so when we set up the variable we have a global var1 which contains this value okay so this is the first the reference we need to do to get to the value once we call the function we will have another variable called the global var1 living in the nested scope of the function so we have a global var1 again let's call this global var1 copy and this is also going to be pointing to the global variable that we have in the global scope. Now, let's try to explain why we are dereferencing once here. We have a var1 and var2. These are our arguments that we get to use in the function. But on the outside, we have a global var1 and global var2. When we call the function, we pass global var1. And when we do that, this is the situation we have. So let's say we have a value, okay? And we have global var1 pointing to that value global var1 this is the case we have here when we call the function and pass global var1 in the place of var1 it's really like we are setting up another variable that is pointing to the variable that contains our value so let's say var1 here okay and if we want to access the variable which is what we have here we need to dereference once because we are going through var1 to access that that's why we are doing what we do here now if we want to access the actual value we will need to dereference once and twice and get to the value which is why we are going to dereference twice if we want to increment the value as we are about to see make sure you understand this once you have the function defined, you will call it. And when we call it, it is going to modify the values in the parent scope. So this is something you need to see. 
And if we print again, we will see the value that we're set inside the function here. So what we expect to see when we run this, we will see original value before we call the function. After we call the function, we should see new value for whatever variable we are interested in. Let's try to run this to make sure you can see this for yourself. So cmake p, and it is the script number six. If we run this, it is going to say global var original value before the function call. After the function call, we're going to have new values stored inside. Now let's see what happens if you don't pass parent scope as we are doing here. So let's take this out and run our thing again. If we do that, the calls to the function are going to be affecting local copies when the function gets to be called and the global variable is not going to be affected. This hopefully proves that a function call like we are doing here is going to introduce a new variable scope, something important to understand. Notice, before we call the function, original value, after we call the function, original value, the setting we do here is not going to be affecting the parent scope. Again, if you want to affect the parent scope, you need to say parent scope here, and you need to go again and say parent and hopefully this is going to affect the parent scoop. Let's run again, and it is going to work now. This is the first function, and the main purpose is to show you a way you can pass values that you computed inside the function. If you want to pass the value to the global scope, please make sure you use this parent scope here. Let's comment out this function. I think it is done by now. And we are going to set up a new function that is going to increment a variable. Let's make sure you can see this function. The function name is increment variable. It's going to take a parameter. And inside, we want to increment the value that was passed in this variable and store the result back in this variable. So the variable we will want to affect or to store the result is what was passed as a parameter. That's why we the reference once here. And in the expression, we want to take the value in this variable. Notice that we are going to dereference twice here because the first dereference is going to take out this var, okay? And the second dereference is going to take out this variable and access the value that we pass here and add one. And the result of this expression is going to be stored back in this variable that was passed. To get to this variable that was passed, we have to dereference once and take out this parameter and get to this variable. That's why we are doing what we do here. After that, we will set the new variable. Please remember that this variable is now living in the local scope of the function. If we want the value to stick in the global scope, we have to explicitly set it. That's what we do here. We want to set the value in a variable that is that lives in the global scope. The value we want to set in that variable is here. Again, because we want to access the value, we dereference twice and we want to affect the parent scope here. That's what we are doing. Once we have the variable, we call the increment variable function and we will see our incrementation done once here. This is what we want to see. So let's clear and run our script. And it is going to say once, you see we have incremented once. If we want to increment a second time, we call the function again and print the value again. We can do something like this. Now it's going to be two and we can increment the variable twice in a loop. So let's try to do that because we already know about loops. If we do this, it is going to print that the new value is, let's see. So run the script and it is going to say, my variable is four because we incremented while it was at two. Hopefully you can see how you can use functions like this. This is really all I had to share in this lecture showing you about CMake functions. The most important thing for you to know is that functions introduce a new scope. Another thing you need to know is that if you want to access the variable that was called, you have to dereference once. If you want to access the value in the variable that was passed as a parameter to your function, you have to dereference twice. Please make sure you understand this because this is going to bite you a lot if you are not careful. Again, this is all I had to share in this video. I hope you found it useful. I am stopping here and I will see you next time.